ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम so today uh, we proceed with our discussion of uh, representations and hopefully today we are going to learn what is the meaning of the character tables that some of us have already used in some other courses to uh, put it in a uh, in one sentence character tables are really compendia of irreducible representations in the discussion so far we have encountered representations right what are representations you need to tell me now what is a representation as far as symmetry is concerned representation can mean other things yeah representation can define character no that is a very roundabout answer i want a straightforward simple easy answer who will tell me yes excellent a representation is a collection of matrices which matrices ah uh, no one by one transformation matrices one dimensional or what we'll see that later so what we have done is we have used basis what is the basis so depending on the like the set of coordinates or functions on which you set to operate yes basis is a set of functions on which the symmetry operations are performed when we do that we get a set of matrices we get one matrix for every symmetry operation the collection of the, the or the entire set of transformation matrices for a given basis is a representation and as we saw representations can be reducible we had started working with xyz for c to b and we got a representation that was three dimensional what is the meaning of dimensionality of the matrix of a, a sorry i gave away the answer uh, the uh, meaning of uh, dimensionality of a representation is what is the dimensionality of the matrix okay each matrix in a particular representation each transformation matrix has a, a particular dimension same dimension that is the dimensionality of the matrix so when you work with xyz or with ohahb for water the dimensionality is 3 what we saw further is that when we worked with xyz the matrices were all diagonal so we could block factorize them conveniently to get three one dimensional matrices so the initial three dimensional representation was a reducible representation one dimensional representation of course cannot be reducible so it is an irreducible representation next we worked with the atoms of uh, water oxygen hydrogen a hydrogen b and we got another three dimensional representation right does that ring a bell was that reducible or was that irreducible it was reducible and it broke down into what kind of representations how many representations two two so one of them was one dimensional and that was a totally symmetric representation 1 1 1 1 1 and the other was two dimensional okay then we ended with the question no actually we ended with something else then we asked the question that we are using different bases and getting different representation so is that the is that a good way of doing it to keep on changing the basis keep on getting representation keep on trying to understand whether it's reducible or not that cannot be a good method right representations depend on the basis we choose and then we don't even know whether the representation we got using h a and h b are actually uh, reducible uh, whether that representation was actually reducible or was it an irreducible two dimensional representation there's no way of knowing that so the way of knowing that is to use group theory which we are not going to do here but we have shown you the consequence of group theory consequence of using group theory to this problem is that we have this great orthogonality theorem which essentially tells us that if you work with the matrix elements of redu irreducible representations then they behave like orthonormal vectors are we clear up to this point this is where we ended yesterday i believe right we don't even have to remember this what we'll need to remember is the fallout of great orthogonality theorem the five 
rules that come out of great orthogonality theorem. Today we are going to use them and we are initially going to try and see whether we can work out the character table of C 2 V as usual ok. Before we start doing that one more point in C 2 V when we had these characters of plus 1 and minus 1 what was the significance of that? What is the significance of plus 1? What is the significance of minus 1? What is the meaning of plus 1? What is the meaning of minus 1 character? Yes? Yeah, I heard some voice from here. Uh, symmetric, anti symmetric, right? If the character is plus 1, then it is, uh, then, then the, that basis element is symmetric with respect to that operation. If it is minus 1, then upon the symmetry operation, it changes sign. So, for one dimensional representation, it is very straightforward, ok. You perform a symmetry operation, any function that you take is either symmetric or anti symmetric if it is a one dimensional representation, ok. So, what plus 1 means no change, minus 1 means change in sign. As we will see, for representations of higher dimensionality, plus 1 and minus 1 can have some different meaning. Let us wait for that. Let me ask you another question. Is it possible that I have a, I have a one dimensional representation and the character is something other than plus 1 or minus 1? Remember the eigenvalue equation we wrote r operates on some function phi to give you now I will write chi as the eigenvalue multiplied by the same function phi. So, what we have seen is chi equal to plus 1 means symmetric minus 1 means anti symmetric. My question is can it be equal to 0? Can it be equal to 5? Let us start with 0. What would it mean if I had chi equal to 0, if I had character equal to 0? Why? Look at the eigenvalue equation. If chi is equal to 0, then what is the effect of the symmetry operation on this function? Annihilation is the word. Function vanishes, you are right. Annihilation. So, a symmetry operation cannot be an annihilation operation, right? You perform a symmetry operation and the function dies, it is not even there because it is multiplied by 0. If that is the case, then uh, there can be operations like that. Annihilation operator is used in quantum mechanics, but then that cannot be a symmetry operation, ok. If the function vanishes, then where is the symmetry? Similarly, if the character is 5, then what does it mean? You have some function, some vector like this, you perform a symmetry operation, sign does, uh, direction does not change, the vector becomes 5 times longer. What is that? What is that called? What is this phenomenon? Something becoming longer or shorter? Yeah. So, the, I have a word for it. It is called distortion. It is distortion, right? So, a symmetry operation cannot lead to distortion. So, the point we are trying to make is that for one dimensional representations, chi has to be plus minus 1 and nothing else. Is the point made? Right now, we are discussing only one dimensional representations. We are not talking about multi dimensional representations as of now. Will you agree with me that for a one dimensional representation, one dimensional representation means what? It means that the functions do not mix with each other, ok. So, any symmetry operation can either leave the function intact or at most it can change sign. If it say turns by some angle, then this vector cannot be represented by itself, it requires two components. Then it is that means it cannot be one dimensional, ok. Right. So, with this knowledge, we can try to work out the character table, but before that, let us take a look at the uh, uh, 5 rules. If you want, you can read up the derivation of these rules from Cotton's book. 
first rule actually is written at the bottom. I should have written at the top, but then I forgot and then uh, you can still read the bottom one first. First is one of the questions we have asked so far is how many irreducible representations are there and this is the answer it can be derived using group theory. Number of irreducible representations IR in this context means irreducible representation is equal to number of classes ok that is the first rule number of irreducible representation is equal to number of classes. How it comes we are not deriving ok. In this course we take it axiomatically unfortunately. So, these are the 5 rules we need to know number of irreducible representations equal to number of classes. So, let us take our uh, uh, familiar example C 2 V. What are the symmetry operations E C 2 sigma V we will write it as z x, I will write this as z and sigma v dash which is y z. How many symmetry operations? 4. How many classes of symmetry operations? 4. Remember what is the meaning of 2 symmetry operations belonging to 1 class? They should be, they should have the same action or they should be interconvertible by some other symmetry operation ok. So, number of classes here is 4. On the other hand, if you want to talk about C 3 V, what are the symmetry operations? Ammonia C 3 V of course, E is there and C 3 is there. How many C 3 operations are there? 2 right C 3 plus and C 3 minus or C 3 and C 3 square, but they belong to the same class we discussed. So, they should have the same character. What we are trying to do here is that we are write, going to write a table with only the characters of the irreducible representations ok. So, I can write C 3 and C 3 square separately but it does not make sense because the columns will be the same. So, I write it as 2 C 3. Have you understood what we are doing? It is absolutely ok if I write C 3 and C 3 square separately, but characters will all be the same because what this translates as is that symmetry operations belonging to the same class have the same characters. This is something we have uh, not proven, but demonstrated to you using uh, I think uh, plus and minus rotation by theta right. Remember sin theta uh, cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta and cos theta minus sin theta sin theta cos theta those are the two matrices when we turn by theta characters were the same. So, I just write them together how many vertical planes are there 3 do they belong to the same class are they equivalent yes. So, again I will write as 3 sigma v. And do not forget I am writing it like this because they have same character. It is absolutely ok if I write sigma v a, sigma v b, sigma v c, but then they will have the same character ok. So, for here what is the number of classes? What is the number of symmetry operations? 6 and what is the number of classes? 3. Uh, let me write down this also. H, H is the order of the group which is equal to number of symmetry operations that is 6 here and it is 4 here ok. So, in C 2 V how many irreducible representations will be there 4 for now let me call them gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4. Later on we learn how to give them a uh, little more meaningful names right now let us use uh, like generic roll number kind of nomenclature gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4. How many uh, irreducible representations will be there in C 3 V? 6, 6 or 3, 6 or 3, 3 or 6, 3. Uh, so, make up your mind you are oscillating between 3 and 6, 3, 3 is global minimum, 
we converge to that ok. So, gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 all right. Now, let us uh, so, so let me write one more thing a little axiomatically the first row is always going to be this no matter which character table it is totally symmetric representation always exists there will always be functions that are totally symmetric. So, the first row is always 1 1 1 1 1 ok. Now, what is the next rule? Second rule is sum over i actually we have it will be third rule because we have already used up this one is not it. Sum over i l i square equal to h what is l i? Yes it is the dimensionality of the ith irreducible representation ok. Now, here h equal to 4 and there are 1, 2, 3, 4 for example, if there is a horizontal plane of symmetry ok and z is the uh, principal axis of symmetry will the character of z be equal to 1 with respect to horizontal plane? No right it will be minus 1. So, z does not always z is not always totally symmetric. Okay. Right now forget the basis we are the entire purpose of this exercise is that we want to be able to figure out the irreducible representations without knowing the basis ok. So, once we know the irreducible representations we will try and fit the basis there ok and the answer to your question is no z is not always totally symmetric it is never totally symmetric if there is a horizontal plane all right great. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 irreducible representation. So, I can write the dimensionalities as L 1, L 2, L 3, L 4. These are the dimensionalities of gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3 and gamma 4 ok. So, now if I use this rule here sum over i l i square equal to h what is what is l 1 square plus l 2 square plus l 3 square plus l 4 square that is equal to 4 is that right h equal to 4 1 2 3 4 understood total 4 symmetry operations that is equal to h. So, l 1 square plus l 2 square plus l 3 square plus l 4 square that will be equal to 4 are we clear so far. Now, tell me what are the only possible values of L 1, L 2, L 3 and L 4? It has to be 1, 1, 1, 1 right. None of them can be 2, none of them can be minus 1 because dimensionality has to be a positive integer. So, what we learn right away is that for C 2 V you can only have one dimensional representations which means that the two dimensional representation that we had obtained using hydrogen atoms A and B that is a reducible representation, it is not an irreducible representation. Are we clear? Okay. Now, if dimensionalities are all 1, then I hope you will allow me to write 1, 1, and 1 here. Why? because character of the identity operation is always equal to the dimensionality of the irreducible sorry dim dimensionality of the representation that is something we have discussed earlier. Are we ok with this right. Now, what more have we said these are all one dimensional representations. So, the characters can only be plus 1 and minus 1 right. Do we agree? We said that about 10 minutes ago, right? Plus 1 or minus 1. So, these 3 spaces have to be filled with plus 1s and minus 1. How many plus 1? How many minus 1? That we have to decide. To do that, come to this. What is this? This is the orthogonality condition, is not it? Sum over r chi i of r multiplied by chi j of r equal to 0, right? So, if I write one of these as say chi i of C 2 chi i of sigma v 
chi i of sigma v dash. Then what does it mean? 1 multiplied by 1 plus 1 multiplied by chi i of C2 plus 1 multiplied by chi i of sigma v plus 1 multiplied by chi i of sigma v dash is equal to what? 0. Let me write it here then. Let me just write here and then it is. So, maybe I will write here itself. So, I get 1 plus chi i C2 plus chi i sigma v plus chi i sigma v dash is equal to 0. Okay, 3 unknowns, 1 equation. Is it possible to solve this? In this case it is because you also know that each of the unknowns can only be plus 1 or minus 1. Right? So, now tell me how many plus 1s will be there, how many minus 1s will be there? There has to be 2 minus 1s and 1 plus 1. Right? So, now what we can do is we can just fill in. It is like playing Sudoku. To start with, let us not forget these are all plus 1s, 1 plus 1 and 2 minus 1s, right. So, I will basically write all these 1s and play around with the minus signs. I will first put the minus signs here, then I will put uh, say 1 minus sign here and 1 minus sign here, then I will put 1 minus sign here, 1 minus sign here. Your character table is ready. There will be 2 minus 1s and 1 plus 1. You can put it in any order you want. I put it in this order because I already know how I am go how I'm going to name them. Okay? I already know the priority that we are going to follow for nomenclature. That's why I've written it that way. You could have done anything. All right? So we stop here and we come back and talk about uh, first of all how to name this, and we talk a little bit about. Uh, two dimensional representations.